in Cape Town has granted a court interdict barring the EFF from causing any disruption during its protest tomorrow. But party leader Julius Malema is adamant that no court order or intimidation from the state will stop the protest from going ahead. He has warned those opposing the mass action that the party will respond adequately to any intimidation, but reassured the country that no looting of shops will take place on Monday and has reiterated that the march will be peaceful. He said the EFF should not be blamed if businesses choose to remain open. We're now joined by Umpile Mwadwe, EFF Treasurer General for the State of Readiness. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your time this morning. So with about 14 hours and 42 minutes to go, uh, is it all systems go? Uh, good morning, Dudu. Good morning to the viewers at home. It's all systems go. Remember, we started um, this campaign uh, in January uh, at our plenum here in Johannesburg, where we went out and uh, we publicly said that you're going to have a shutdown on the 20th of March. I think a lot of people thought the 20th of March will never come. That's why you see the state, uh, they don't know what's happening. But we've been very consistent um, that we, 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 we are shutting down the country on the 20th of March. It's our, our constitutional right, by the way, to protest. And no one can tell you not to protest. That's why correctly you say the courts dismissed the application by the DA because it's in the constitution. Unless if uh, Ramaphosa and Begitkele and DA and everybody, they've got a new constitution that we don't know of. But the constitution that we know, um, which was agreed to, which is actually a good thing because it means those who came before us, they anticipated that there should be and there will be this protest in future and they must be protected. We are citizens. We are saying enough is enough. We are tired of load shedding. We are tired of being told when to eat, when to sleep, when to party, when to go shopping, because literally the government is now detecting what must happen. When they say low shedding starting at 2, you already have to work around that 2 o'clock to so say you should have cooked, you should have made milk for kids, you should have made food for everybody, and you should go to bed this time. That's wrong. And we are saying, because now it's become permanent in our lives, it's something that we cannot accept and we mustn't accept as South Africans. But also we are saying, the person at the helm of this, which is the president of this country, the, the, the independent panel says there's prima facie evidence of corruption that he must come and clear himself. He uses his majority in parliament to suppress and to avoid accountability. And we're saying we've done everything. We fought in parliament. We fought through the courts. We fought through questions to him. Now we, went, we marched to the PPSA offices to release the reports. The report comes and say, actually, there's nothing wrong with him. And the person who admitted that he had dollars at his pala pala farm, he never denied it. He actually said, yes, the money was stolen. So he confirmed that the money was there. SARS comes and says, the money was never declared. Everywhere, there's no records of this money coming in. Now we're saying, you broke the oath of office. Why are you still in that office when your conscience tells you that actually you should have left? Actually, Mr. Ramaphosa left because, remember, there were allegations that he actually resigned and he was um, told not to. So his conscience told him that it is the right thing to do. But those that benefit from him being the president went to tell him that, no, don't resign. We'll secure your seat. We'll even give you the second term of the presidency. So we're saying enough is enough. When we protest in parliament, they tell us we're only 44. Now let's show them that actually we're not 44 because now we must take it to the streets, invite everybody to come and join. And the reason why we are going to everybody is called stakeholder engagement. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to take people by surprise. You go to businesses and you say to businesses, there is a shutdown that we are planning. Be with us. Understand that our people are angry. Understand that our people are unemployed. Understand that our people are underemployed. Understand that our people are saying they are landless. Understand that there are high levels of inequality in this country. And understand that there's high levels of crime in this country. With all that, with your right as a businessman to open the business, these people also have got the right. And their right is to take it to the street to voice their frustration. And how are you as a businessman going to stop the people when they are marching and they are hungry and angry? They see you with your food outlets there open. They are hungry. What must they do? They are going to go there and eat. And we are saying, let's avoid that because we are as an organization that says we want a peaceful protest. But if you insist on opening, that's fine. It's your right. But let's see what you're going to do when the people come storm into your shop. We march every day, Dudu. We march from 2013. There's not a single time where we had a violent protest. 
And the, peop the business people themselves, they know when the match comes through town, they close the shop themselves without being told. They close the shops themselves because they know that we can't control it ourselves. How, how are we supposed to block people? In you fact, um, I think we spoke to Patco in the week, and Patco initially had said that their own intelligence has suggested that usually when there's protests, uh, people burn buses, so they decided they're going to halt those services, and literally a, a couple of days later, after engaging with government, they were advised that buses should be on the streets. You speak of engaging business people as a matter of courtesy to say this is what's going to be happening. So avoid a situation that you will find yourselves in a compromised position, if you will. That has been interpreted as intimidation. Uh, what does the party say to that? It's actually nonsense, Dudu. And, you know, we, 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 it's, it's, so it's driven by white people. Is driven by white supremacists. Who started saying that? Let's, let's go back. Who started saying that? It's the Democratic Alliance that started saying the EFF is going to have a violent march. You know why? Because they're white. And this is organized by a black child, the leader of the revolution, who comes from Sashiko, organized this national shutdown. Because he's black with no white supervision, then it means it's going to be violent. That's what they are saying to us. And this stupid Ramaphosa and Begitele, they join in, in defense of whites. So we must... Actually, say to Ramaphosa and Begit Kale, you can be puppet of whites, but not us. Who is behind this nonsensical violence? It's white people. It's, it's, it's driven by them. And they are pushing that into black people to believe that actually it's going to be... You can't compare July 2021 with this one. The July 2021 was an unled revolution. No one, little today, government doesn't know who arranged that. But this one, we've came out. Even in parliament, we announced it. We are lawmakers. We are members of parliament. We are law-abiding citizens of this country. Why would we go and ban things? We are saying we are protesting peacefully. But no, because we are not being supervised by a white person, then it's going to be violent. Did they come white people and say it's going to be a violent march when the, the whole country marched against Zuma? Zuma must fall. No, because they were there. They were, they, were, they were part of that march. So anything that has got white people will not have violence, but anything that has got black people will have violence. You know why? Because black unity is what they don't want, these white people. So we must reject that. It is not true. We are going to have a peaceful uh, protest. We are engaging stakeholders everywhere to say, let's join together. That big Kelly can't go around and say, actually the state is the one that is uh, propelling this violence. Because we announced this in January that there's going to be a national shutdown. Five days before the shutdown, Begit Kale and the security cluster says there will not be a shutdown. So who's confronting who? Who's intimidating who? Who's planning for violence? It is the state. That's why they even came and said the army will be deployed. Jiki Jiki, they've, they've now removed the army from the street because they know that they can't just release the army without parliament knowing and without telling the nation why they're releasing the army. The Patco people, they were right to say they must not even trust this one of Begit Kale. I mean, he came here on Thursday. Thursday, Friday, he was in Houting. He leaves, he goes to, jo uh, to, K to, to KZN. Just yesterday, during the day, daylight, a prominent figure gets killed here in Midrand, a, a liquidator of uh, Busasa, gets killed. Where is he prote his protection? He gets killed with no protest, nothing. Now, how is he going to block 20 million people or 5 or 2 million people even who are protesting on the street? And he can come and tell you that you will protect you. He won't. He went to the, to the, to the mall there, one mall. He says well, business must operate as usual. How are business operating as usual when a lot of businesses have said we will close because they can't trust these people of government? Mm. So part co, we advise them that do not operate. Well, if you want to provide buses uh, for free to, to, to the fighters, you can operate. It's an option that you are giving to us that you are going to operate and then we can use the buses to transport. But our, really our plan is not to go anywhere. It's to protest where we reside. Umpile, there is an atmosphere of fear in the country. There's an atmosphere of uncertainty. There are people who are asking themselves, will I be able to get to work tomorrow? So if I come across a group of protesters and I say, I need to get to work, will the way be cleared for me to get to work? So essential services workers will be, will be cleared. And everybody, look, we are in a democratic country, so you can do whatever you want to do. If you don't want to join the march, you, you are free not to join the march. But just understand that we also have the rights to protest. And we can't protest in the air, do do. We, we walk on land, Mofati. We are not, uh, we don't have wings, we don't fly. So if 
10,000 people are working. How are you going to pass through 10 people? Unless if you, like how? Just explain to me how you're going to, to navigate. It's going to take you five hours for you to get through to 10,000 people just much because we're going to be walking. We're occupying the streets tomorrow and we're advising that it might not be safe for you. If I'm a leader and I've got these people that are with me on that day, you expect me to control one car when there's 10,000 people. Oh, guys, let's be realistic. So all we're saying is, Let's join the man, the shutdown, the protest tomorrow to avoid anything. We don't want any looting. We are not violent. We are not going to do any, to use any, we've never said we're going to be violent anyway from the onset. We've always been saying it's going to be a peaceful protest. But we are just warning that already we can see the signs of the state, that they want to unleash a violence on us. I mean, yesterday I was there somewhere. Then I see the police shutting down the shops of, uh, of innocent people who are just selling tires. Why are you doing that? So which law is that? That says the police must go and shut down. Here in Alex, the fighters are walking into a mall. Again, continuing with stakeholder engagement of informing the mall that, look, there's going to be this shutdown. No, jiggy jiggy, the police are there. The nyalas, the what what. Where is the crime there? Why are the nyalas following innocent people that are not armed, that are just having pamphlets, inviting people to come to join the shutdown? They are leaving the criminals on the street. The killers of AKA. Till today, they have not been arrested. The killers of Hillar, we don't know who actually is the killer because this ones get arrested, this ones they leave. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody, till today, there's no arrest. My R5, you name all of them, do do none. There's not been a successful prosecution of all these murder cases in Houting alone. In a quarter last year, they, they, they recorded 1,700 murder cases. The GBV cases have skyrocketed. The cash in transit highest in the country have skyrocketed. Where is the minister of police? Now he's unleashed a lot of police on the street to go and guard against innocent people. You know why? Because we are black. And the, 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 the whites must propel blacks as being non-thinkers. They look at us as baboons. We can't think. Even though we are prof, uh, 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 public figures, we are in parliament, we are lawmakers. Why would we go and break the law that we are making ourselves? In the lead up to tonight, midnight, you have been engaging a number of your internal stakeholders in the form of your members. Uh, we saw Julius Malema in Orlando as well this week. So you fully got the mandate of your constituency. What is it that they are telling you, essentially? So when we meet with them, we take the state of readiness. Remember, in cases like this, actually we suspect that the police are going to bring agent provocateurs so that it can be this much, this peaceful protest can be seen to be violent. Because there's no one who's talking about violence except the DA and the police and that drama post. So these three people, we suspect that they're going to plug or plant in our people, the agent provocateurs. So we're taking, we're taking records of who are we with. And anyone, we warn anyone who might be sent by the police, by the DA, by Ramaphosa, to come and provoke us that... Do not do that. You will not come back. Because as us as fighters, we are ready, we are combat ready. We don't want any problems. Stay away from us. The police must not provoke us. We come in peace. By the way, this is not a dictatorship state. We see that Ramapasa want to turn the state into a dictatorship by unleashing the army, unleashing the police on a peaceful protest. We will well, not allow The Secretary that. General of the ANC says the party wants to challenge the authority of the state. President Cyril Ramaphosa characterizing this and saying, well, regime change, you can only effect it through a vote and not the way in which the party is moving. They are talking their own things. We are talking about a protest that is enshrined in our constitution. When we marched for, for Zuma, did they say that? No, they never said that because it was the person that they don't like. So today, because it's their favorite, it's the puppet of whites. They come with all the terms that they want to. Of course, we are lodging a campaign. It's not a secret. We are lodging a campaign. We are saying Ramaphosa must resign. It's a campaign. We have started it already in parliament. We are continuing. And Ramaphosa will not finish this term. And we're going to do everything, everything within the law to remove Ramaphosa from being the president of this country. You mentioned a little bit earlier on, um, a few moments ago, that you are checking within your members who is with you so that you avoid the situation of having people that are planted in the march. How exactly are you going to do that? Is there a register? How will you know? How will you identify that this person is not part of us? So remember, do we, this protest is a national shutdown. So each and every, we've got 4,468 wards in South Africa. 
each word is going to embark into a protest. Now, there are words where there are business um, uh, operations. You know, there's one word with 26 different companies. That's why you've got the likes of SAFTU who joined us. So in conjunction with the people that have said, we are supporting you, we are meeting with them, to close any loopholes so that there is no agent provocateur. So we take the reports word by word. Because in our words, we know each other. We come from what one, for an example. Houting has got 529 words. We take a register of who is with us. We've got leaders of our branches in all these words who are taking that. Indeed, these are the people that we know. Yesterday, when I was in that meeting, I said, check the next person next to you if you know him or her. If you don't, then you must explain why he's in here because that's how you check if these are your people. So that is what we're doing. And we're saying, agent provocateurs must not come anywhere near us. If they want to see the Red Sea, they must try us. So come midnight, um, the streets of South Africa will be occupied? Fully occupied. 20th of March, from the first minute of midnight, we're on the street, until we say now is the end of 20th of March. And after the 20th of March, we listen to our people what must happen. Umpile Maudre is the EFF Treasurer General. Thank you very much for your time this morning.